On this lesson, we will be talking about airway management and techniques. Healthcare providers should make the decision as to the appropriateness of placing an advanced airway during the ACLS survey. In this section, we'll go over the steps of inserting basic airway adjuncts. The first basic airway adjunct is a device called an oral pharyngeal airway, or OPA, and it's used in unconscious patients who are at risk of developing airway obstruction. Inserting an OPA is fairly simple with the right training. Step one is to clear the mouth of any blood or secretions with suction. Step two is to select a size appropriate airway device. Step three, place the device at the side of the patient's face. You'll want to choose a device that extends from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. Next, Insert the device into the mouth so that the point is toward the roof of the mouth and parallel to the teeth. Lastly, step five. Once the device is almost fully inserted, turn it until the tongue is cupped by the interior curve of the device. The next device is an NPA, or nasal pharyngeal airway, and it can be used on either conscious or unconscious patients. Inserting an NPA is rather similar to inserting an OPA. First, select a size appropriate device for the patient. Next, place the device at the side of the patient's face. Like the OPA, make sure to choose the device that extends from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. Also try to use the largest diameter that will fit in the nostril. Step three is to lubricate the airway with a water-soluble lubricant or anesthetic jelly. Step four, insert the device slowly, moving straight into the face, not towards the brain. Step five, ensure that the device is snug without being forced or stuck. If it feels stuck, remove it and try the other nostril or a smaller NPA. Suctioning is essential to maintaining an airway. Suction the airway immediately if there are secretions, blood, or vomit. Do not suction for more than 10 seconds. To avoid hypoxemia, follow suctioning attempts with a short period of 100% oxygen administration. Monitor the patient's heart rate, pulse oxygen saturation, and clinical appearance during suctioning. If a change in monitoring parameters is seen, interrupt suctioning and administer oxygen until the heart rate returns to normal and clinical condition improves, and assist in ventilation as warranted. Here are some tips on suctioning. Do not insert the catheter too deeply. Sterile technique should be used near bronchi. Each effort should be no longer than 10 seconds. Keep in mind that the patient will not get oxygen during suctioning. Monitor vital signs and stop if the patient experiences hypoxemia, new arrhythmia, or becomes cyanotic. Now we will cover the advanced airway adjuncts, which include the endotracheal tube, laryngeal mask airway, laryngeal tube, and esophageal tracheal tubes. The ET is an advanced airway alternative. It is a specific type of tracheal tube that is inserted through the mouth or nose. It is the most difficult airway to place, however, the most secure airway available. Only experienced providers should perform endotracheal intubation. This technique requires the use of a laryngoscope. Laryngeal mask airway is an advanced airway alternative to ET, but provides comparable ventilation. The laryngeal tube is similar to the esophageal tracheal tube, is more compact, and less complicated to insert. This tube is only one larger balloon to inflate and can be inserted blindly. The esophageal tracheal tube, or comba tube, is an alternative to endotracheal intubation. It provides adequate ventilation comparable to an endotracheal tube. It has two separate balloons. That concludes this lesson.